Here's a question, new question for you. Can you draw this graph without lifting your pen off the paper and you're not allowed to retrace any of the edges? This, was a, this, this puzzle you might have seen as a child. They give you this picture and say, draw this graph without lifting your pencil off the paper. And can you do it? Uh, maybe, maybe I shouldn't spoil the fun for you, but the answer is yes, you can draw this graph if you're, if you're careful. Uh, starting at vertex 3, you can go from 3 to 6, 6 to 5, 5 to 2, 2 to 6, and then to 4, to 5, to 1, to 2, to 3, and then to 4. We call a graph like this drawable. So here's the, the official definition. A graph G is drawable if, it, if it's connected, and G contains a trail that uses every edge exactly once. So for example, is this graph drawable? Same, gra same graph without the little roof on top of it. You can try all you'd like, but the answer is no. This graph is not drawable. If you wanted to draw every edge in the graph, you would have to retrace an edge somehow. But how do we prove it? So here's the key observation to all proofs about drawable graphs. If G is drawable as a trail from X to Y, then that graph G has to be connected and every vertex, except maybe your, your starting and end points, X and Y, must have even degree. I'll say that again. In a drawable graph, if, if you can draw it as a trail from X to Y, everything has to have even degree, except maybe for the vertices X and Y. Why is that? Well, let's look at a vertex that's not X or Y. Then every time the trail enters V, with an edge, then it must exit V using a different edge. Okay, So since every time we enter a vertex, we have to leave it with a different edge, that proves that there must be a, an even number of edge, edges uh, that are attached to V. In other words, the degree of V must be even. Consequently, if if my graph has any hope of being drawable, then it has to have at most two vertices of odd degree. And since the graph in our picture has, uh, has what? The degree of two is three, the degree of three is three, the degree of four is three, and the degree of five is three. Since I have four vertices, the degree of six is four, that's fine. But I've got four vertices of odd degree. And our last observation said, in order to be drawable, you must have at most two vertices of odd degree. So the above graph is not drawable. Now let's take a look at this graph. This was the graph we saw earlier. If we look at the degrees of the vertices here, we say that the degree of one is two, the degree of two is four, the degree of three is three, the degree of four is three, the degree of five is four, and the degree of six is four. So here we have two vertices of odd degree, vertices three and four. So is it drawable? Well, we knew it was drawable from before, but now what we know is that any trail that draws G would have to have endpoints three and four because we know everything other than the endpoints must have even degree. So if you had trouble figuring out how to draw that graph before, it's because you were starting from the wrong point. Can the graph that we just saw be drawn in such a way that it begins and ends at the same vertex? Well, no, because if it begins and ends at the same vertex, that would mean in particular it might have to begin and end at 3 or begin and end at 4 or begin and end anywhere else. That would require that every vertex have even degree. So if you, want to have, if you want to draw your graph as a closed trail, then every vertex has to have even degree. Let's take a look at if we modify our graph by inserting a new vertex 7 and connecting vertices 3 and 4. Now every vertex has even degree, right? Every vertex has even degree, including 3, including 4, including this new vertex 7. And can we, 
draw the graph as a closed trail? Sure, we could start at 3 and do the same thing we did before and end at 4 and then we take our two new edges, we go from 4 to 7 and 7 to 3 and we've drawn our graph this time as a closed trail. Or we could modify our graph by just adding an edge that goes from 3 to 4. We would no longer have a graph anymore, technically we would have a multi-graph, but nevertheless we would be able to draw it as a closed trail. Again, it would be drawable and begin and end where it started. These kinds of graphs are called Eulerian. The official definition is that a graph or multi-graph G is Eulerian if it's connected and G contains a closed trail that uses every edge. So every Eulerian graph is drawable, but not every drawable graph is Eulerian because to be Eulerian, not only do you have to be drawable, you have to be drawable in such a way that you end at the same place that you started. So for example, the, the first drawable graph that we saw, though that's drawable, it's not Eulerian because I can't begin and end at the same point, nor is this other graph. So here's, here's an important observation about, about Eulerian graphs. If a graph is Eulerian, you can start and end at any vertex. There's no special starting and ending point of an Eulerian graph. It's like a continuous piece of rope. You know, uh, so for instance, to take a trivial Eulerian graph, this little square, this cycle, um, you could draw this as A, B, C, D, A, or you could start at B and go B, C, D, A, B, or C, D, A, B, C, and so on. So there, there would be, there's no, there, there's no place that has to be a starting point. Any place can be a starting point in an Eulerian graph. These graphs, by the way, are called Eulerian because Euler, whom we've met before, invented graph theory in 1736 to solve the following problem. This is known as the Bridges of Königsberg problem. In the Prussian town of Königsberg, now the Russian town of Kaliningrad, just north of Poland, the Pregel River flows through the town, which included an island and seven bridges, as illustrated. The question that they were interested in was, is it possible to walk around the city crossing each bridge exactly once and, if possible, return to their starting point? Euler invented the concepts of graph theory to solve this problem. By representing each vertex as a region and each bridge as an edge, we get the following multigraph. And you can look at this multigraph, and since this multigraph clearly has four vertices of odd degree, right? The degree of A is 5, the degree of B is 3, the degree of C is 3, and the degree of D is 3, then it has four vertices of odd degree. This graph is not drawable, and it's certainly, if it's not drawable, it's not Eulerian. Hence, there is no way to tour the city crossing each bridge once. So far, we've shown that if G is an Eulerian graph or multigraph, then G must be connected and every vertex must have even, the, even degree. But what about the converse? What is the converse? Is it true that if the graph is connected and every vertex has even degree, then must the graph be Eulerian? Must you then be able to draw the graph without retracing any edges as, and end up where you started? You might be surprised to know that the answer is yes. If a graph is connected and every vertex has even degree, then G is Eulerian. We'll prove this theorem using strong induction. What are we inducting on here? We're going to induct on the number of edges. Okay, so 
we begin by looking at a graph that's connected and every vertex has even degree where the number of edges is zero. How many graphs are like that? Just one. A pretty boring graph looks like a single point. Okay, so we, we've proved the theorem beyond a shadow of a doubt when the, when the number of edges is zero. Now we state our strong induction hypothesis. Suppose the theorem is true for all graphs with fewer than E edges. And now let G be a graph with E edges. And we have to show that it is Eulerian. Okay, so we know the graph's connected. That means it doesn't have any vertices of degree zero, right? It doesn't have any of those isolated points because it wouldn't be connected then. So since every vertex has degree at least two, then I claim that G must have a cycle. Why is that? Well, if every vertex has degree at least two, then you start at a vertex, you walk to a new vertex, and oh, if, it's an, if you've been there, if you've only been there, walked into it once, there has to be a place to go because it has degree two. So you walk to a new vertex and a new vertex and a new vertex. Eventually, you will have, because there are only a finite number of, of vertices in our graph, then you have to eventually go back to a vertex that you were already at. And once you've done that, you will have created a cycle. Okay, so, so a graph with, with where every vertex has even degree, at least two, must have a cycle. Let's call such a cycle C. If C uses every edge of G, then congratulations. You've just drawn your graph G as one big cycle, and G would therefore be Eulerian, and we'd be done. Otherwise, if, if you're not so lucky, what do you do? Let's create the graph G minus C. Let's remove the cycle from the graph, okay, and look at what, what we get. So for instance, take a look at this fishy graph here in this picture. Okay, it's, it's a connected graph. Every vertex has even degree, right? Every vertex has degree two or four. And in it, we must have a cycle. There's a cycle C. Let's remove the cycle C from our graph. Now, when I'm removing that cycle, I'm leaving the vertices in place. I'm just getting rid of the edges. That gives me this new graph, G minus C. Now, what happens when you remove a cycle from a graph. What happens to the degrees of the vertices? Well, every vertex in that cycle is going to lose two of its edges. So every vertex in the cycle, the degree goes down by two. Every vertex that's not in the cycle, the degree doesn't change at all. So every vertex has its degree reduced by zero or two, reduced by an even number. So since the parity doesn't change, every vertex of G minus C still has even degree. Okay. Now, if this graph G minus C is connected, like here in our picture, then by the induction hypothesis, G minus C, since it has fewer edges than G did, has to be Eulerian. Hence, we can draw the graph G as a closed tour the, entire, the original graph G is a closed tour by drawing C and then drawing G minus C. If G minus C is not connected, then by the induction hypothesis, each of its connected components, which have fewer edges than the original graph did, is itself Eulerian. And since G is connected, each of these components of G minus C had to make contact with C somewhere. If they didn't, the original graph G wouldn't have been connected. So here we go around the cycle C, and any time we're at a new connected component, we tour that component, we draw that component before continuing on C as shown in our illustration. As an exercise, you might want to try the problem. If 
G is con a connected graph or multigraph with exactly two vertices of odd degree, say vertices X and Y, then G can be drawn as a trail from X to Y. Hint, insert an edge from X to Y and apply the previous theorem.